Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's looking good now, guys. Tubers. Let's have some fun. Tubers, how you doing? Well, I did something. I want to show you this. Now, don't ever let anyone tell you you cannot do something. You put your mind to it, you can do anything. Now, this is my anything. This is what I've done. Yeah, buddy. These are RPM control arms for the armor Creighton. And this is a T-bone bumper for the Team Corrali Chronos. Yeah, it's not cheap, I'll admit. It's $53. That's a lot of money for a bumper. But look what they give you. The whole bumper plate itself and all these pieces. And these are rubber. So that's made to give when you smash into things. They also gave me this plate. It was supposed to go here. But I don't understand why they would want you to put that. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I don't understand why they would want to put that. And these screws that hold it on to the bulkhead right here. See these screws? They were not long enough, the ones they gave me. They were little tiny ones. They were too short because there's a nut captured back here. And it, see that? The thread's coming through. There's a nut captured back there. Those those screws had to be long enough to, to hit the capture, to come in contact with those captured nuts. And they were not. So I found a couple longer ones. That one's really long, but it works. And I got one over here. It just barely caught the nut. But I got it. It works. Bumper's on. Yeah, buddy. T-bone bumpers, they're the, they're the stuff, man. They are the stuff. So, I'll show you the bottom. It came with those screws. The original bumper mount went back here. You guys can see that right there, like there. But I don't really see why it would need that. I believe this replaces the original bumper mount, which is right here. Yeah, buddy. I still got to check because I got the rear bumper for the, excuse me, the Radix. And I want to see if the rear bumper for the Radix will fit in the rear of this. Because I actually have a crack going across the back of my rear skid plate. But basically I wanted this because I'm taking a lot of nose landings. And this bumper is going to protect my front wheels from a lot of that abuse. And you guys have seen the jumps I do. But you can do it. These pins... These are from my DHK Maximus. You see it down there. I took a pin, one of these babies, cut them in half, and each half fit. Boom, boom. The screw goes in the top, holds the pin, you're good to go. And you guys have already seen my shocks. And I had to lengthen these back out to pretty much the length they came in because these, uh, the Kronos arms are longer. And I had to use the, uh, the armor Creighton. CV, CVD shafts, but I had to change Where are they? Here we go. I had to change these because these are the Armour Creighton ones and the ones on the Team Corrali are different and they have a spring that holds that pin in But I guess it looks like on the On the Armour Creighton It's hard to get the name straight the Armour Creighton when this goes in there it goes into the hub and the hub, the bearing must go, I'm pretty sure the hub, the bearing goes over this. And the bearing holds that pin in. But on the Team Corrali, you can see right there, there's a spring. The spring holds the, the pin in. So, I just had to change the stubs. Yeah, buddy. One other thing I'm noticing is there's a little bit of play here. This play is from the uh, wheel adapter on the, on the stub axle. This play. Now, I, know, I guess it's not a lot, but it kind of bugs me. And I have the ones from the Radix. I wonder if they'll fit on there any better. I really didn't try them while I had them off, and I probably should have. But for later. For now, it's good. But I had to move these all the way out, you can see. So I probably never should have shortened them now I'm thinking about it. But uh, I think they're still long enough to be strong. We'll find out. Test and torture it, right? And we'll see how she does. But I think it's good. How do you guys like it, huh? You like the blue? I love blue. I want you to tell me what you think. I love the blue.
Let me put the body on it. The body with the shoe glue and the drywall tape holding up really good. Ooh, look at that, huh? Wow, that bump is close to that rubber, but it fits. Just fits. You see where the body got a little marked up. I think that's from the tire hitting it and crashes. But now the bump is there. It's going to protect it a lot more. It needs to be washed. I'll have to, you have to excuse me. I haven't washed it. I just came back from vacation. And I just got, I had to get these on there. I just, I had to see it. So the front end is wider now. I believe, I'm not positive because I don't have an armor Creighton, but I believe the armor Creighton, I believe the front of the chassis and the bulkhead is more narrow on the armor Creighton. So I don't know, if any of you guys have the armor Creighton, I want you to tell me what the length is of your wheelbase. I have to find my tape measure so I can measure this sucker. Because I'm kind of curious how long's my wheelbase now. I gained at least, I don't know, an inch or so. Let's see, excuse my horrible camera work on here. I'm gonna, I'll try to edit this so it looks decent, but looks like we got 18 inches. I know it looks like the wheels are pointing out, but the wheels will point in as the suspension goes up, and with the battery pack in it, it's the front end will sit lower. And they won't be they won't be pointing out as much and I can adjust it later, but I think that's gonna be pretty good So we got about You can see but about 18 inches just over 18, but we'll call it 18 inches And you guys got an armor creating measure your wheel distance and you tell me how far apart your wheels are I got 18 inches for width And if I were to go on the side It is 15 inches from center to center Just about 15 inches center to center wheelbase So it's wider than it is long. That's funny But this thing is a beast and I don't know if I made this clear in my last video But I'm gonna make this clear in this video That the Torox decided to work again. I think it had something to do with that plug the wire going to the eat to the receiver I changed it and it still wasn't working. I put it back in the drawer. And just before I went on vacation, and I was like, you know what? It's weird that it won't let me set neutral position. So I hooked it back up and it decided to work. So I put it all in the car and it's working. And I have the, uh, what is that called there? The Turnergy 2000 kV motor in it for now. I figured I'd give that one a rock and see how she does. She's a ripper, guys. She's a ripper. I did have problems with my ESC running hot, so I got myself a fan. Yeah, I ordered one. I don't know. It's kind of like blind ordering, you know. I think I should have got a big fan. I got this fan. Ordering it, I didn't realize how small it was. But I'm going to try to mount it right on top of that ESC, and I'm going to feed it two fans. And then, I don't know. I got to get. I got to try something. I got another fan on the way. I'm probably going to order a gigantic fan. You order stuff from China, from Surpass. They make this big fan. I seen, uh, what is his name of his channel? The Nuclear Ranch. That dude's got some cool videos. I know he watches my videos, so I wanted to say hi. And I wanted to tell you guys, you should check out the Nuclear Ranch. He does some crazy builds on his shredder. Now, you guys have seen my shredder. I haven't used her in a while. Because I've been playing with the Kronos and the MTAD. So I put the body on that just to hold the body, but my MTAD, yeah, buddy. Oh, I believe I got parts to fix that now. They came just before I left. I got steering pot to fix that, so I can fix that. I mean, if I feel energetic, I'll do that tonight. I've been playing with the Radix. Of course, the Radix doesn't even have an ESC or a motor in it. I'm gonna put the the, the Torox motor back in it. The Curon motor, yeah, Curon is called. And I'm going to put the BLX 185 ESC that I bought off eBay used. I'm going to put that in this car, this buggy. And i got to make a new roll cage before I do jumps with it. we got the blue. Rocking with the red. With the blue back here. I love blue. You know, I just love blue. And you guys, you tell me what you think. we got the Torox 185 back in the... Back in the Kronos, and like I've said in previous videos, 
I think that this ESC does deliver more punch. Uh, I think it has more punch than even the 8S Traxxas ESC. Of course, you got to pay Traxxas a bunch of money to be able to tune their ESC. You guys know. I'm not a fan of Traxxas. I don't like companies that sue other companies. You know, Traxxas is actually suing... Um, not HBO, Cinemax, for the name Max. It's like, dude, you know Cinemax was around way before the Max was? But, you know, I'm going off on a rabbit hole, so I'll stop there. And y'all tell me what you think of my control arms. And the T-Bone Mamba Jamba Bumper. Yeah, buddy. You tell me what you think. I haven't even gotten to drive it yet. I just put it together. I like to let the blue threadlock cure overnight before I use things because threadlock needs to cure before it will do anything. Well, we'll see. It's still daylight out, so. Alright, tubers, we have more cooling power. The fan on there. I tested it. The ESC stayed cool. But the motor was at 180. That's not good. So I just attached this fan on here. You can see what kind of creative juices go in there. Solid the wires in. A little liquid electric tape to, you know, cover the wires. You can use shrink tubing, but you get to cut the wire that you're soldering to. And I didn't want to. So this way, it's quicker and easier. Zip tie, hold everything in together. And yeah, that's aiming right at the back of the motor where the heat is. So that should do the trick. I gotta test it, but it's raining out, so probably tomorrow. But yeah, she's uh, all fixed. Now I have another project I'm working on, which I will show you guys uh, probably the next video. Yeah, buddy. Y'all stay confident but humble. Peace.